I had been thinking about doing this trip, a two-week solo in the Boundary Waters, for several years, but other things kept getting in my way. The last few years, however, I've been noticing that the portages aren't getting any shorter or easier. My packs aren't getting any smaller or lighter. Most of all, I'm not getting any younger. It was painfully obvious that if I was going to do this trip, now was the time. And so it was, early in the morning of August 17, 2015, I set out from the Lake One Landing to begin an epic journey. Epic for me, in any case. Well, we didn't get the wind last night. But what we did get was a light rain shower. Very light. Not very long lived. But, as a result, I'm still packing up damp this morning. Not quite as wet as some of the dewy mornings. But uh, still not completely dry either. So it's about quarter after six right now. I started getting up at about 5.30. A little bit after. Put your on that Sam. So, anyway, welcome to day 16, the final day of this adventure. You gotta loosen these straps before you start packing the packs. These compression straps. Helps things go into the pack a lot easier. I'm done. There, that feels better. Now if you notice, we got three layers here. We got the pack itself, we've got a garbage bag for waterproof protection, and I've got an inner layer of nylon cloth. And that just keeps everything from abrasing on that uh, plastic bag. So you don't punch holes in your bag or wear holes in your bag by putting stuff in and out of your pack. This pack that I'm using here, this blue pack, is a Cooksa Custom Sewing Pioneer Hybrid. This trip required a little bit of difference in how I packed. The main logistical problem with an extended trip is all the extra food. So what I did for this trip was I borrowed another spare barrel a friend. And I used my Explorer pack that I usually use for my tent and clothing and stuff as my food pack with two air barrels in it. 
And then I use this Pioneer pack for my caps and everything. I could really have used two Explorer packs, but what I have available at home is one Explorer pack and two Pioneers. So, Pioneer being bigger than the Explorer. This pack was really too big. I had a lot of trouble uh, getting it to fit in the canoe. If I'd had an Explorer pack, it would have been a lot better. But I made it through 16 days with what I have, so uh, obviously it worked out okay. Here are the two barrels. They're both counter assault bear kegs. International Grizzly Bear Center certified. Keep your food safe from bears. This is my Explorer Pack, Cook Custom Sewing Explorer Pack. Of course, I had a whole bunch of stuff still packed away in it last night, protected from the rain or the dew or whatever. So I gotta unpack it here first before I can pack it. And I'm remembering to undo the compression straps. One barrel in. Make sure it's down properly. And the second barrel. Two barrels, two of these barrels fit very nicely side by side in an Explorer pack. Like so. Then I pack the other stuff around it, around them. So that's almost done now. All I've got to do now is grab my rope from the tree, put it in my tarp bag. My tarp bag goes in here, and then this gets done up. And then I've got a couple more things to put in my uh, Pioneer bag, and uh, I'm going to be pretty well. So here's my canoe all loaded and ready to go. Uh, Behind the seat here, behind the seat here is my uh, food barrel, or my food pack, kitchen pack, which is still the heaviest pack, so that's kind of helping to counterweight everything else a little bit. There's Sam, all ready and raring to go. Up front is my equipment pack with my tent and my sleeping bag and all that kind of stuff. Sitting on top of that is my thwart bag with the map case attached and two water bottles. And underneath the map case there is my camera bag. So there's only one thing missing and that's me.
Well, we're just pulling away from the second of the two portages between Fire Lake and Lake Four. We have a lot of paddling to do now. Deer fly bit me on the palm of my hand. And now my index finger on that hand, my left hand, is all swollen. It's getting to be the size of a football. Well, exaggerating, but it's getting, it's definitely swollen. So now, paddle through lakes four, three, and two for my next portage. And then I have the two short and close to together portages. And that'll be all the portages I have for the trip. This is the channel between Lake Four and Lake Three. filming and there was a eagle screeching and a loon calling
And I looked down and the camera was off. Well, I was going to land on this uh, sandy spot over here, but apparently from all the bird activity, there must be something dead over here. I thought, oh, that's okay, I'll go in and investigate. But of course, I have Sam along, and he would definitely investigate too. And I don't want him investigating like that. Well, let's see if we can figure out what it is, anyway. And something sure is bringing in the eagles and the vultures. see anything from shore. Must be up in there somewhere. Okay, now we're just leaving Lake 3 and entering Lake 2. Going up to the uh, First of the two portages between lakes two and one. One of them is 30 rods, the other one is 40. Can't remember which is which. I guess this is the 40. We're now among the islands at the north end of Lake One, just before the channel to the north. There were just too many people on the portages into Lake One to do any video there. Then wind noise completely ruined the footage once I was on the lake. Oh, and by the way, my apologies for the crud on the lens. Now leaving the main part of Lake One, heading north towards the channel. I think uh, between those two portages and this lake, I see more people today 
people on boats today. And I've seen the entire rest of the trip. People on boats everywhere. And you have to be careful when you get to this part of the lake. A lot of people think that this in front of is an, is an island. And it isn't. Big peninsula. Off to the right here, there's a big, huge bay. You want to go to the left of this peninsula to get into the channel to go home. Go back to the entry point. As I paddled past the timeless cliffs, the portal back to the present and civilization, I experienced the bittersweet emotions I always do at the end of a trip. I was looking forward to being back home with loved ones, but still very reluctant to be emerging from the wilderness. It had been a good trip, if not an excellent one. While I hadn't been able to complete the loop I'd set out to do, I had spent 16 days alone, well almost alone, in the wilderness. Much longer than any of my previous trips, probably longer than any trip I'll ever do. I'd had a few obstacles and hardships, but had managed to overcome them all and had a wonderful time doing it. Thanks for coming along with me.